This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. What's your name, ma'am? Stacy. Oh, Stacy. What do you do for a living, Stacy? I work for a Christian publishing company. If there's one thing I can't stand. <laughs> Listen up, slap nuts. Sit down, dummy, I'm talking. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Oh, Wendy. You fat! You fucking numpty! Will you laugh that ah. face? Shut your mouth. Ah. The cream of the crop! But he does it better. Hey, hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WrestleCast, presented by RBT Entertainment on the Broken Internet.com, Buttermag.com, iTunes, and wherever else you may find this fine audio recording and live on RBT Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel, where we're talking about professional wrestling, both in the mainstream and the independent scene. My name is Matty J. That's TWK. Hi. Seriously? You're not going to do the whole gimmick? What gimmick? You're a gimmick. Yeah, I might be a gimmick, but I'm still a better gimmick than the 24-7 championship. Hey, that is the greatest championship to be introduced on Monday Night Raw in the past seven days. <laughs> couldn't get past seven days, couldn't you? <laughs> Neither could it. <laughs> What's up, guys? Wait, yeah. wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold the phone, hold, hold all the phones, hold them all. Who all is that right. speaking? Who is that speaking, ladies and gentlemen? Speaking us for, for, I believe this might be the first time we ever have you on this show. Uh, my cohort from Tokuris Live every Sunday, uh, seven o'clock on the uh, on the RVT Entertainment Twat dot com Twitch dot TV situation. Our good buddy Spin Ace joins us, ladies and gentlemen. Some uncharted goddamn territory for me, that's for sure. <laughs> Hold on. Aren't you a Toku Riffs guy? Yes, I just Hold said on. that. I'm just trying to get all the information wrong. all in a <laughs> row. Good, at least somebody's got all the information then. <laughs> it was going to be fun. It was going to be fun. I'm going to have any information. <laughs> Oh, this show's gonna be off the rails before I even get a chance to hit a clip. That's good. This is gonna be fun. Oh, <laughs> uh, why? Why is lazy? Why is Spade Ace on the show? Probably something to do with Brock fucking Lesnar. Fucking shut up again. Oh, we'll be talking about that Ooh. in much more stops. Oh, you bet your sweet bottom dollar we will. You bet your sweet bippy. You bet your asshole. And of course... That's not something I would ever bet. <laughs> Me neither, but if it's the safest bet in the world, you bet your asshole. You bet your life. <laughs> anyway. So we got money in the bullshit. I mean, bank. And, uh, of course, that happened. That, that pay-per-view. We will be reviewing that as per our usual traditions. Uh, we had some news, uh, most of it good, some of it decent. One of them will get you very, very angry. But before you get too angry, we will remind you that our third segment, tomorrow, if you're listening to this live, is double or nothing. AEW is no longer a t-shirt company. It's going to be a wrestling company tomorrow. I'm so hyped. I can't watch it because it's fucking wedding, but still... Hype. <laughs> and we will be previewing this, ladies and gentlemen. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of professional wrestling history. 
about to happen tomorrow. We will be talking about that and all that good stuff. Your winners and losers, your emails and comments, and maybe a question or two in the chat. We don't know. We, we, might, we may or may not do it. But before we do anything else, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're wondering, hey, hey, Maddie, why did you say Brock fucking Lesnar? I thought he was gone until Summerfest or something. Folks, <laughs> we wish, we wish, ladies and gentlemen, the following clip is what happened. Take a listen. Ali has been through hell and his fingertips away from heaven. Almost there. Ali's got the briefcase in hand. What the hell? Yeah. yeah, as soon as Brock started erupting up that ramp, all you were hearing was bullshit in your head. I, I know. I watched it, but I, be, I was, uh, we were still live, and uh, yeah, uh, all I saw was red and bullshit in, in, in my eyes as soon as I, I saw the thing, and I watched the thing, and uh, you know what's so sad? Get up, Ace, you know what's so sad? You know the six quite bit of beans, like to stack them by the side. I'm sorry, what? No, no, it's good. It's good. It, it, your singing is better than than the wrestling, so that is very good. Oh, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're better than WWE this week. You know what's sad about Money in the Bank, folks? Not that not that Brock that they did that WWE is too fucking scared to trust their their talent again. They had a good show going. They had yeah. an honest to god good show going. And we and if you allow us about 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, we shall explain what happened before the bullshit. As you heard, as uh, the rest of the clip would incur, um, would have incurred if I didn't hit the bullshit button immediately. Brock pretty much threw uh, Ollie halfway across the arena, picked up the briefcase, showed up being showing up looking like he was using a boombox. But before Maddie and I, you know, lose our minds about that, uh, let's let's talk about the positives. The, the positives. Yeah, money uh, in start, the bank. Top of, well, top of my list. Cruiserweight wasn't on the pre-show. We'll get hold to on, that. Hold on. We'll get. We'll get yeah, to that. There's yeah. a procedure to that, my friend. <laughs> Can you tell that it's, it's Bay and Ace's first time? <laughs> I don't know if you could. Be gentle. No promises. Anyways, uh, uh Money in the Bank took place on what day, Maddie? Yeah, May 19. May 19. May 19. Oh, folks, if you if you if for those groaning at the stinger last week being Shawn Michaels, you know, teasing Kane with the May 19 thing. Come on, people. Come on. It's like the one time I could have been playing the whole thing the entire month because it's May 2019. But I didn't, because I didn't have to. Pay-per-view oh, was on May 19th. That being said, Heart Third Connecticut, the XL Center, played host to Money in the Bank, which was Sunday, May 19, 2019. And the card, as Ace, uh, Ace uh, mentioned, was Cruiserweight Championship Free. We had a full-on PPV. Cruiserweight title match. It wasn't as good, but it was good. It was, it was okay. It was good. Just we'll get to that. Let's go. We'll get to that as usual. Pre-show uh, did feature the Usos taking on Daniel Bryan and uh, Rowan as the tag team champs. We thought the champs were going to take over, but no, Usos won that one. It was a decent match, but I don't understand why the champions lost, especially since the Usos ended up losing on Monday. So this win ended up meaning nothing. Stop, st words. stop, stop, start 50 it's 50 booking. It's okay. You want to know why? Because Brian and Rowan didn't use their Usi cream. Yeah, I brought that back. Usi <laughs> hot from the makers Oosie of ass hot. cream. 
Oozy hot, oozy cream. Either way, God help us all. <laughs> That's the shittiest piece of comedy I've ever seen in my life in wrestling. I have seen a lot. But yeah, oozy hot from the makers of ass cream. Hey, cream. Here's spokesperson Bubba Ray Dudley. Why would you? What are you doing with ass cream, might I ask? Moving on. Um, I hate all of you. <laughs> T-Dub? Don't be, don't be mad because Ace and I are having fun with fun bringing back bad comedy memories. Okay. <laughs> Besides, it's ass cream. Is, hope, okay. <laughs> Besides, ass cream, one of my favorite comedy bits of all time. So I'm not. I'm not <laughs> it would be. <laughs> it, it's it's Just more of a sentimental imagine. reason than anything else. That Just or a lot of family were watching the wrestling. Rubbing it all over. God damn it. Yes, I would love some chocolate flavored ass cream. Ooh, my. He, you ever get the he, feeling he. I made a big mistake? <laughs> oh, you made all the mistakes tonight. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Anyways, the pair of you proper opens with the women's main event ladder match featuring Bailey, Son featuring Carmella, with Dana Brooke, Ember Moon, Mandy Rose with Sonya Deville, Naomi, Natalia, and Nikki Cross for the participookies. Bailey won the thing. Yeah, and it was uh, quite a good match. There were some man. nice brutal spots, and uh, I got and I really enjoyed seeing Naomi's athleticism and her cosplay. Very nice, Bumblebee. She she. she Cosplay. Yeah, not everyone was like, oh, she looks weird. Naomi looks weird. Boo, boo. And I was like, okay. Every... At first, I'm like, okay, it's a cosplay. Cannot get, I do not know what it is, but I know it's a cosplay. It's a nerdy Every thing. Every nerd in the audience went, ooh, hello. <laughs> if you didn't know, that was Bumblebee from Teen Titans. That uh -huh. she was cosplaying. Uh -huh. also, Ember Moon with, also, Ember Moon with a very nice Assassin's Creed cosplay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And can we talk about that spot she had? Oh, you talking about the oh total eclipse God. off the ladder? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Actually, off the ladder How about that springboard ring, stunner the to the fucking outside? Out of the owl. Just owl. Like, oh, God. All also, the owl. Uh, prop, also, props to Daniel Brooke for showing that upper body strength hanging onto that briefcase. <sighs> Can I say I'm one of the first people that... Uh, I like Dana Brooke. I'm amazed she was actually, like, one, in this match. It wasn't replaced by the last minute by some... Stupid ass booking. But two, <laughs> looked pretty good in all things considered. She did. Yeah, she did. And the thing is, like, she's been a favorite of the writing team for a while. They've been trying to get her into programs for months and months, but for some reason, Vince, uh, he just wouldn't budge. Hmm. I wonder why. Nevertheless, uh, as we mentioned, Bailey won, which was very nice. Uh, the match uh, ending came when. Mandy Rose was knocked out outside the ring by Carmella, and so Sonya Deville literally lifted Mandy Rose up, was lifting her up the ladder, and then and then Bailey, Bailey went, went the nah uh, nah uh, punch, punch. Hey, look, briefcase, odd clips. Oh, what a pun! I won. Although it's unfortunate because you think that this would set a good tone for the night, but. Starting and you, you, know what? Match, you know what? You know what? In, in fairness, fast. it did. However, things went downhill fast with the next match. Yeah, it was uh, Rey Mysterio Ooh. taking on uh, Samoa Joe. And, uh, oh boy, something happened because Joe bled. And a in fairness, lot. a lot. And uh, he lost the championship a lot. And it went, you know what? The match lasted longer than Mania, 140. But uh, new champ, Rey Mysterio, Joe lost, looked shock. And then he beat up Rey Mysterio a little bit more, and then uh, broke his nose. did Joe lose. He lost while getting pinned, even though his shoulders were way up. God, two all those this is now, this, folks, yeah. two championship, two pay-per-view championship matches. Two pay-per-views, two championship matches. The shoulder is up again. And I give this match minus 
Five stars! Wait, 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 time out. Who gave it minus five? No. Me! You gave it minus five, but any did anyone else do it? I don't know. I don't look at anyone else's ratings. I give this match minus five stars. This no. was the drizzling shits. I wow. will be honest, I, in a weird way, I agree with T-Dub, simply for the fact of these two guys could have produced so much more. We've, we've seen them do it at least. And hell, that you got to admit, that was the camera angle to launch a thousand gifts. Oh, just to show yeah. the blood pouring out of his nose, which, by the way, how the fuck did he pull that off? <laughs> like, I keep looking through the footage going, when the fuck did he get hit? Like, that, what? Huh, what? That was <laughs> that was more than likely the luckiest hit, or, or, or in case of Samojo, the unluckiest hit ever. Probably. And Cure, uh, yeah, he was, but it was a minor thing. It's like, you, you, it, if you've noticed, he didn't exactly wrestle all that much in, this, uh, in the months, in the month, in the almost two months he had off. So, yeah, like, the way I see it is WWE's trying to capitalize more on him being more or less insane than an actual wrestler, which. No! No! You know, if and nothing then, else, the badass, uh, the, 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 he's still a badass, which is awesome, but at the same time, oh god, they're treating him like they're treating, treating Bray Wyatt a couple years ago. All talk, ooh. let's all talk some badass, but nope, we're gonna, we're gonna make a lose all the time. Why? That's a... Because I can, a slip, son of a bitch. Slippery ass slope. It's like that one slide at the carnival. Mm. You know the one that's got like the five bounces in it. You go down the first one. It's like, oh, okay, it's fine. I'm catching some air. You hit number two. Oh, God, I'm no longer in my lane. <laughs> I, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds terrifying. It is. I, I've, I've been to a a, a, um, a water park with, with a ride uh, with like multiple lanes and then one bad bump or one bad move and you're in someone else's lane. And it's that moment. Uh, it's at this moment. He knew. He fucked up. Well, T Dub, there's a there's a slide down here at the uh, Florida State Fair. It's got about three large bumps in it. It's a it's a tall slide. I think it's almost three stories. They give you a piece of carpet to slide down on. Yeah, and you get going. You hit that first hill, and it's like okay, it's fine. You're getting a little bit of air, but you're back on. But you're gaining speed. You hit the second one. You feel the bump on the way down. You hit the third oh, one. New world! Yeah, yeah, basically. God help you, you land that wrong. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> also of note um, was the spot of them finally pulling the quote-unquote trigger on Dominic for this. And having yeah. him basically cradle his father on the ramp after Samoa Joe's assault. Because the assault didn't happen in the ring. It happened when Ray was walking away. Because you know what? We don't need that much action happening in the ring or, you know, Joe immediately turning around and beating the crap out of the winner. Nah. <laughs> you say that. Uh, next up, Shane O'Mac defeated the Miz in a steel cage match by escape. The sweat, the sweat, the sweatiest bollock that ever sweated still keeps escaping. God damn it. Minus five stars. I am not going to disagree there. Nope. And the you should have feud. left it at mania, guys. You should have <laughs> left it lie. And the crappiest feud just keeps on going. And this also featured another moment where the ref looks really stupid because Shane is getting pinned. He goes for the ropes and the ref breaks the pin. And then the commentary immediately buries the ref. Okay, I'm like, I'm going to be honest here. There's a couple refs I'm amazed haven't been fired. Because, you know, <laughs> the others have been fired for less now, apparently. But what no, the... <laughs> no. Oh. Shane is the best in the world. I, I just don't know what's, like, going on with the referees on this night. Because earlier in the match, uh, Miz had Shane in a figure four, and he went to the ropes, but the referee didn't break that. But... The referee you know what? The... I I I I, yeah. I I have a theory. It is a hypothesis, so this is a grain of salt type, type of territory here. 
As uh, my fellow compatriot Harley Mornstead would say, A what up, Jack Daniels? Oh, a drip drip in that sauce. So you're Some of them the refs were... drunk off their ass. It certainly felt That's like the it. only way I could explain the idiocy of the refs this, this, on that particular evening. Yes, and as we also uh, made reference, when Shane was climbing the cage, he only escaped because he slipped out of his jersey. Yeah. Thus, and it, the Miz lose and like, two pair of views in a row to a man who isn't even a wrestler. And we're trying to he build gets, him up to be like part of the SmackDown main event scene or the Raw main event scene or he's, whatever. He gets buried by the son of the owner who, let's be real, that's still what Shane is, regardless yeah. of how you see him, who is now feuding on both both nights, mind you. I He's going to he feud with Roman Reigns, and I can see that already. Miz is re relevant in this picture because who's going to kick Shane's ass eventually? Roman Reigns. Yeah, like, and I, as you know, you guys know, I like Roman. But yeah. I actually feel bad for the Miz. Can't believe I'm actually saying these words. He's getting buried by someone who isn't even an athlete who is known for two things. Well, th three things now. One, yeah. not being able to throw a punch to save his goddamn life. <laughs> two, the coast to coast, which I'm sorry, looks dumb as hell now. Yeah, I will never be able to take that seriously ever again, no matter who <laughs> throws it or does what with it. And three, winning pay-per-views by basically default. Or, default, you know... Default, 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 default. default. If you forgot the fourth one, crazy, stupid fucking stunts. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, throwing himself off high high cliffs and shit, because why not? Jesus Thankfully, we got breaks from the stupid, thanks to the Cruiserweight title. Ooh, and it, was, it, got, oh, main, it yeah. got main card. To, Arya Davari taking on Tony Nese for the Cruiserweight title. Went 9-25, not the best Cruiserweight title match, but good job, boys. I yeah, am still shocked very, very, it was on main card. It was very I'm serviceable. Wanting to know, I'm wanting to know whose dick they had to suck besides Vince's. You uh, know what? I'm willing to bet Tony Nese went putting me on the main card. Why should I? Because I can flex like Gary Stridham. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Tony Nese? Nese? That fucker shredded. Yeah. <laughs> Put me on the main card. Why? Because of these... 12 inch pythons, brother? I like it! <laughs> and of course, I give props to Arya Davari for his entrance. Oh, yeah. Nice old uh, expensive car entrance. Always a good heat seeker. Oh, yeah. Although people go, Alberto Del Rio! And. <laughs> They're giving they're giving the cruiserweights special entrances. Give them a break, people. Yeah, it's like the fact that a cruiserweight got an entrance that was actually felt like it was worthy of a pay per view. That that's good stuff. Let's keep doing that. Do that. Do that more. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah. Um, Please give them some fucking really, weight. This match, uh, while not the best, was still pretty hard hitting, and yeah. I really do enjoy Tony Nese's finisher, the running niece. Mm hmm. I like I like finishers that have their puns. <laughs> they make me smile. Yes, especially also, if they I'm hurt. Especially if they hurt. Yeah, the also, pun. Um, wait, wait, the and people are and people are gonna inevitably gonna ask, wait, the pun or the finisher? And teed up, and I would go, yes, yes. Anyways, also I like Nice uh, still wearing his Tanahashi gear. Yeah, like that. I like to call it. Anytime someone wears a vest or a jacket that has like an open uh, abdomen area, I call that the Tanahashi jacket. Makes sense. Because, you know, he's the first one I ever saw wear that. <laughs> it's perfect for a championship. It, it, it is. But for Tony Nese, it's like, look at my abs. Look at them. Count them! <laughs> you see the you know why I'm here? He's not Bully Ray. <laughs> no, he kind of wishes sometimes. <laughs> I doubt that. Sometimes, not not all the time, of course. Uh, next up, the women's section of the program. It started with uh, Becky Lynch defending the Raw Women's Championship against Lacey Evans 
It lasted 8.40. Uh, it was a disarmer. And uh, Lacey Evans. Another ref botch. Ref, of course, there's a ref botch. For those playing the drinking game, you are drunk now. Yes, also, so. yes, you read that right. You can now officially call this Money in the Botch. <laughs> so, Lacey Evans gets uh, Becky Lynch into a pin, and her shoulders are clearly down, but the referee takes forever and a day to run around them for some reason. I'm not sure what he's doing. He was playing Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, can somebody just go to the finish where uh, Becky Lynch puts Lacey into the disarm her? Yeah. And uh, let, I will say this, uh, Ref, ref, stupidity, referee, stupidity aside, uh, Lacey Evans, good effort. Oh uh, yeah, not bad. This is a very, another serviceable match. I uh, still don't think she's quite ready for the title yeah, scene. There was but, no heat know, because be uh, they refused to build her up with with, with actual moves uh, in the last few months. Yeah, yeah. It's, all been, it's all been yeah. She hasn't really had very. Has she wrestled at all on the main roster? No, or no. barely. This is basically like. You could basically call this her first real match, honestly. Yeah, I know it's not her first one on one. Her first real match on the main roster was a real okay. rumble, she, but I uh, think she needed some jobber matches. Mm -hmm. She needed she some needs, uh, she needed some jobber matches just to establish some of the things she was doing to to, to Becky Lynch because some of the some of the spots she was put, putting in there, solid spots, solid heat getting spots, but no one got it because no one said because no one was it uh, was able to discern. Oh, maybe I should boo at that. Yeah, she needs more in her repertoire besides punching someone with her right hand. I think that works as a finisher, but they just haven't, like, they haven't built it up as a finisher because she's never used it on the main roster in a mm -hmm. match as a finisher. It, people really only see it as something she just does when she attacks people. It's not been built up to be a match ender. Like, because it's never ended a match on the main roster. Hell, has she done it on anybody besides Becky? Uh, she has on random. NXT. Yeah, but not NXT? like on Raw yeah. or SmackDown. She no. no, she hasn't. I think they were they're they're hoping to build on uh, the NXT matches, but obviously that was uh, that was a slight mistake. But again, good effort. This is just nitpicking at this point. And then Charlotte Flair showed up and said, "Come on in, bitch. We're having a match now." And what? It went uh, six fifteen, and Lacey Evans was salty. So punch, Charlotte Flair won. No, no, that's not what happened. Uh, first, Lacey interferes, punches Becky in the face, and then Becky no sells it, rolls up Charlotte, and then they get out of the pin, and then Charlotte big boots Becky Lynch for the win. All so right. Lacey's interference was pointless, or part of it, as they would try to sell it. But I, I know I shouldn't be. Can I say I'm officially just tired of Charlotte? Because uh, you're not alone. Uh, you, you're not alone. Yeah, I wouldn't really blame me because she's been nonstop in the title picture forever in a day. She's never been it out be of nice the title picture a, at this point. It would be nice to have two sets of title rivalries that do not involve Charlotte Flair. That would be nice for and at least even a couple more months. So, I know it's part of her character, but the fact of, you know, even though she... We'll get to in a minute. But after this win, she'll tout that she's what, uh, ten times? Nine times. Time. Nine, Nine times. Time. And let's be let's be honest. Let's look back on some of those uh, quote unquote title wins and runs. Half of them aren't even a thing. She gets them and loses them within like the week. Yeah, like the most notable part was when she was uh, having a rivalry with Sasha Banks, where they kept trading the belt back and forth every single month. Yeah, and that still somehow adds to her legendary status. And oh my god, I'm so sick of that kind of a number. I I have this title so many different times. No one cares anymore. Yeah, and there's a rumor saying that they want to make her a 17-time champion as soon as possible. Oh, sweet Jesus, no. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> now it's only a rumor. They 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 could write the ship and say that's the fucking stupid. But here's the thing. Here's the worst part. Charlotte Flair is an amazing wrestler. She is absolutely she is. astounding. I won't deny that at all. The sad the thing is, is, she's overrated. They don't showcase it in the correct way. 
That's Every it. time they show her going over somebody, it's literally, yeah, I'm going to go over you now. It doesn't even feel like it's one of those... It doesn't feel like it's with consent. It's like, oh, higher-ups want this. You have no choice. No and, noob. Uh, no noob. And let's After be real. That. It feels like her repertoire is becoming more and more consolidated. Like, And again, I hate to do the comparison, but it's kind of true. It's a Roman Reigns thing. The big boot, the figure four, one thing here and there, and that's it. Uh, they're, anyways, they're... Yeah, anyways, after the match, uh, Becky and Lacey start fighting, then Charlotte joins in. They start double-teaming Becky, and then out comes Miss Money in the Bank, Bailey, to save the day. And, they, and, and then and Charlotte, up, and then she looks at, and then Bailey looks at Charlotte. She looks at her briefcase, and a, and a light bulb goes her head. Hey, ref! Cash in, and the crowd goes mental. The crowd goeth wildeth. Twenty seconds later, ding a ding, Bailey is a new women's champ. This new SmackDown women's champ. You deserve a chance. She's run around the crowd. Holy balls. I believe her first run as SmackDown Women's Champion as well. First time, yeah. First time. And she's first time. now a, the first ever Women's Grand Slam Champion. And for those wondering, well, she was in a Grand Slam. Okay. NXT, SmackDown, uh, Raw, Tag. Game, set, match. If you count NXT in there, that's the Grand Slam. Main oh, roster, yeah. it's still Triple Crown. So... But she, by count as Grand Slam champion, because, you know, you see so many executives in WWE say, oh, no, NXT isn't our developmental brand. That's our third brand. <laughs> so if they want to keep that going down that route, Grand Slam. Grand Slam. It is, at the very least, a Triple Crown, which is not a mean feat. It is, she's the first woman to pull that off. So Triple Crown or Grand Slam, it's still history. It's still valid. It's still awesome. And Bailey deserves it. Yeah, and it's... I say on Twitter, I'll say it again. This night was the redemption of Bailey for all the bullshit they put Ooh. her through for so you, uh, long. You get you get the slight feeling this was supposed to be Sasha Banks. <laughs> I have no dad? idea, and I and I don't really care uh, let, because uh, no. because because um, if Maybe. I'm because apparently another one of the rumors is that Sasha is doing something in uh, in New York for a 2K video game. Since, ah. since reportedly, this year's video games showcase is going to be on the women's revolution. Uh -huh. And who is the main part of that in NXT? Sasha Banks and Bayley. And Charlotte and Becky as well, the four horse women. Let's, let's be fair here. Yeah, and reportedly the first match for it is going to be Charlotte versus Natty. Oh, good mm, fucking call. From back down at NXT, yeah, the uh, the finals of the tournament to crown the new women's champ. Yeah, that was a good call. So, so well, hopefully, means... I'm not. Oh, sorry. Uh, so no, go ahead. All I was gonna say is I just hope this means we're going to be in more old school NXT arenas. And oh my god, oh, the fact please. that I'm saying that sentence makes me feel old already. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that, oh god, I'm I'm thinking about an NXT arena in a 2K game, and I'm just like, that's actually really good. They've done it before. Um, they, they, they've they put NXT, and uh, I think the last game I played was NXT Toronto and Brooklyn, I want to say. Hmm. I'm a, like, I like seeing like the old Orlando uh, venue, the Full Sail takeovers. Yeah. They've I done it justice before, but I think they would they'll do it more justice in the uh, in the future. We got a rest of oh, a paper to preview there, guys. We got to move on. Uh, Roman Reigns uh, beat the crap out of Elias in ten seconds. Before that, we got a full electric concert from Elias, and then Roman Reigns shows up. Spear dead. Three. Moving on. Nope. Superman punch. Throw to the ring. Spear. One two three. All is good in the hood. Roman Reigns is good. He did the good thing. He did the good dog thing. You get biscuit, Roman. <laughs> he did the big dog thing, and we're going to move on to what is more like, I'm, I'm going to call match of the night here. 
I'm going to call it match of the night. Seth Rollins oh, taking on yes. AJ fucking Styles for the Universal Championship of 1945. Now, is this the, mass, the best match I could have pulled off? Probably not. But goddamn, that's a first. That's a great first chapter. I was on the edge of my seat for the entirety of like the last five or so minutes. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is amazing. Especially that counter, that counter into that the Styles Clash. Jesus fucking Christ, fucking counter, curb stomp into a Styles Clash. People go the gravity and it's like, folks. This is what happens when two guys say, "Hey, can we work together on this?" And there's no ego. They're saying, they're saying, wait, you want a counter? It's like, you want a counter? Fuck you, your counter. Instead, they go, Seth goes, wait, wait, you want a counter? Oh, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. This now, was just, for me, this was a damn sweet match. Oh. And that counter, to me, outdoes the curb stomp into the RKO. Especially at level of difficulty, because you have to, you know, the RKO was literally, the stomp into an RKO was just a springboard into a Easy RKO. That, that Styles Clash, from that stomp into a Styles Clash took some skill. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the logistics of that damn. <laughs> See, folks, when you put two guys who know how to wrestle very fucking good together, uh, a little something called fucking magic happens. And I am glad that Seth retained. That good call happy. there. And one thing I'm also glad I had about glad be, yeah, one thing I'm happy about, no one turned heel, at least yet. I just styles, you know, he went back to the ring, he shook Rollins' hand, he was like, Come on, man, you know how hard this is for me, man? Did you see me smash all these controls out to rub up down down man? <laughs> you have no idea how many tables I'm gonna smash after after this shit. <laughs> this match proved that two baby faces can go into the ring, have a good match. And you know what? There could still be a storyline there. Fucking yeah. take note, WWE creative. No, no, no. Creative will take note. Vince probably won't. Yeah, uh, actually, Dustin Rhodes did an interview earlier this week, or probably earlier today, where he says that people give ideas nonstop, but, you know, Vince just doesn't take them. The audience of one prevails. Yeah, which makes him you wonder, what is the point of creative? Anyway, so match of the night. If you have not watched uh, the mad the pay per view, if you have to watch the matches, uh, the the show for one show, uh, for one match, I should say that would be the one match. Which is not to say this, Kofi for Kofi and Kofi Kofi and Kevin's didn't have a bad match either. They had a great match for the WWE. Before title. we get to that, we had a segment. That's true. We got a uh, Luch House Party in the ring. They were supposedly mm -hmm. preparing for a six man tag, and then WWE decided to do. The worst way to respond to uh, to the whole racism thing. By I having... get the feeling this was written in stone before uh, before they decided to before the racist things. Out of, uh, poor there was Stone. plenty of time to change this. Oh, Vince, 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 Vince. This doesn't look good. Like, let's have the guy we just find for racism uh, beat up a whole bunch of Mexicans. Let, let's do that. That's great. <laughs> What the no fuck were you thinking? See. Vince doesn't think. He's in his own bubble. You just find him $100,000 goddamn dollars for being racist fuck. Oh, I know what we'll do. We'll have him a squash match against three luchadors. Also, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of seeing Lucha House Party treat like jobbers. They're, they're so good. Yeah, I, I feel Grand horrible Mental saying is a this, former but... CMLO. Grand Metal League is a former CMLL champion. God damn. Yeah. Like, I feel horrible saying this, but, like, at this point, what's the point of Lucha House Party? There's... They come out, they win a match because they want to have fun, quote-unquote, and that's it. Like, they don't feel like a, a stable. They don't feel like a tag team. Dear God, none of them are ever going to be treated like singles to a singles push. What's the point to them anymore? Like... Last I checked, a couple of the guys were on two hundred five. Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, they were on two hundred five live as a as a as a package deal. You know what? You know the reason why you have them. They made Vince laugh. 
Look at them. They got pinatas. Bah ha 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 Isn't that funny? I, oh god, you know what it seems like to me? He saw Lucha House Party and went, Who brought Los Matadores back? I love those guys. <laughs> they look like the Los Luchadores guys. I got put them in there. Give them my buttload of money. Vince, credit. Vince does know what Los Luchadores says. <laughs> yeah, I gave yeah. him too much credit. Yeah, I, 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 I'd like to read off um, Grand Metalik, uh, his CMLL credits, just to make myself sadder. Uh, let's don't, see. no, teed up, don't, don't, you, you, no. We need you for CML the rest of the World night. Super Light Heavyweight Champion, Sam L. World Geos Champion, with La Sombra and La Mascara, and Mystico and Valiente. Sam L. World Welterweight Champion, Mexican and Geos Champion, with Metro. Stop! Metro Stop! We need you for the rest of the night. He wants one Stop! Of Mania Stop! With that He's friend. already dead. Tita. It's just like someone who is this accomplished, and now this is what he's doing. This is what he's been reduced to. Teed up, we warned you. <laughs> we fucking warned you. Plus, we gotta move on. This is just uh, you, 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 you know what you, you know what happens better. after the WWE title. It gets me even sadder. You, now, now you're not gonna want to do the rest of the show. Well, anyways, we we have the WWE title match, which was very good. Yes, not, not, no slouches. Really... They couldn't exactly top uh, Styles versus Rollins. I don't think that was the intent, but they still had a great match. This proved that Kofi could do it by himself. Yeah. And. Uh, although weird that Kevin Owens is turning to a foot fetishist, what was that all about? <laughs> I don't and never want to know. Me neither. Go on, take off his shoes. Yes. God damn it, Vinny. Do not fuck up Kevin Steen. Again. <laughs> anyway, in the main event. Money in the Bank, the men's version. It went 19 minutes. The participants, Ali, Andrade, Baron Corbin, Drew, Mag Drew McIntyre, Finn Balor, Randy Orton, Ricochet, and Sami Zayn. Oh, wait, wait, he got beat up. He yeah, there was a storyline going throughout the whole night where first Sami Zayn went to Triple H's office, complained about Braun Strowman possibly showing up, and then Braun Strowman showed up, and then we saw Sami Zayn upside down, and then Triple H went up to Braun Strowman and was like, Hey, uh, we we know you did it, uh, so get out of the building. Uh. And then that was that as far as an eighth participant in the match was concerned, at least until the last 10 seconds. But before those last 10 seconds, this was a phenomenal air match where people were getting murdered. It was amazing. Finn? Ricochet? That was awesome. Never do it again! Jesus God damn, my back still hurts. Fucking... You crazy bastards. Like, some of these spots were evil. Like, they you know, were. Like I, that part of me. Drew's powerbomb spot on Ricochet. Jesus Christ. There's no padding, only pain. Like, also, um, Baron Corbin choke slam through the table. That was great. Yes, 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 yes. Probably one of the best choke slams in recent memory, and the fact that even Baron Corbin was working his ass off in this match. Yeah, you look at this raw. You look at this like you would. You look at men. you look at you, you look at this on paper. You would think there's no fucking way they could pull off put out a good match, a good main event match. Guess what, folks? Up until the up until uh, up until the last few seconds of the match, they did. They busted and, out a good one. Yeah, and, I was absolutely hyped. I was like, oh my god. Oh my god, this is amazing. And oh my god, is that Ali going to win? Oh, no. And ladies oh. and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Pendulette. And then there's, there's this, this asshole. So, again, those of you who didn't see this, to set the scene. Just to quick cliff notes. Ali... Ali about the reach. He's got his hands on the briefcase. Literally Rock's just music hits. There. He's he's sitting there just holding it. He's not even trying to take it off. He's just holding it. Brock's music hits. For some reason, Ali becomes a deer in the goddamn headlights and is just staring down the ramp in disbelief. 
Brock then, I'm not, I wish I was kidding, basically pushes over a ladder onto a couple camera people who I swear to God almost got hurt. Probably yeah. did. Without yeah. any kind of impedance or obstacle, walks into the ring, knocks Ali off the ladder while he was still holding the goddamn belt. Grabs the thing, match over. He's sitting there laughing his head off. We dropped a few frames, but uh, yeah. Um, Brock shows up, fucks everything up. Everyone pissed. Everyone. Yeah, I'm so glad I don't pay WWE money. I'm so glad I use my brother-in-law's network. I mean... Like, <sighs> There is so much to unpack from this crap. Like, for starters, the speculation that Ali didn't even know about this until right before the match, which is would explain why he didn't fucking unhook the goddamn briefcase. We're not, we could unravel this, unpack the shit out of this. We could do it the entire way through. Let's just call it what it is, gentlemen. Bullshit. Pure bullshit. Grade A. Vince McMahon approved. Bullshit. And it and ruined. Rico said he, it ruined Rico said, a good show. And uh, Rico said he canceled his subscription to the network after this after this match. And yeah, when can't you, say I, I blame you. Real, what this match is is a microcosm of the exact problem that WWE has. It's their over reliance on people who aren't their full-time roster and the one thing i've always the one thing i've always given credit to the attitude era over the current one is when you look at the way Vince man used to do things is he'd always rely on who his current stars are now he wouldn't look to the past in fact back in the 90s he constantly made fun of wcw for relying on the past because he knew that's just a short-term fix that's not long-term you can't just build a company over people of the past because very soon they're going to go away and what are you going to be left with? People who aren't going to get that big reaction because they've been conditioned to not give a reaction to them. They've been trained to only give a reaction to the part-time guys, to the people of yesteryear. But now, you know what says it all? Just look up any kind of clip from Money in the Bank on YouTube, you'll find the same picture. Brock sitting at the top of the ladder, holding the briefcase, shit eating grin. And then the next night on Raw, entering like he's boomboxing the fucker, which launched all of the memes. Good Lord, all the memes. <laughs> and can I also say, fucking Tuesday night, I all swore from it. It's like, oh, Paul's got the briefcase now? Is he going to cash in? He's cock-teasing people at this point. Like, we were on the call going, there's no fucking way there he's showing up on Tuesdays. No way. No. Although, reportedly, Fox wants Brock on their show. So, uh, it, it may indeed do. happen. But that is a story for another day. And God damn it. <sighs> Memes aside, guys, fuck this show. They had a... Fuck this company. What do you guys rate this? Out of five. Ace, you're our guest. Out of five, what? Is your rating? Uh, right up until like that last twenty seconds, I would have said this was like a solid three point five four. This like this was enjoyable. There was some shoddy stuff here and there, but it was an enjoyable pay per view until the depth charge, <laughs> which dear God sinks it down to a goddamn one. Because guess Ooh. what? We were rid of Brock. Then guess who fucking comes back? Dear God, we couldn't, couldn't get rid of him. Last. One PPV. Like, what, barely even a month. Barely even a goddamn month. And this fucker's back in our faces. And I'm, I'm speechless. Like, yes, I understand, Vince. You think he brings in money. But dear God, is he sucking it from you faster than you're making it. <laughs> and honestly... The reaction after this should say it all. 
I have I have seen people, you know, try and put a positive spin on this, but even then, it all comes back to this is shit and never should have honestly happened in the first place. Um, basically, anything you watch on anything I've watched on uh, YouTube has basically said, if you want to bring him back, bring him back in mid card first, or you know, not build him back up. But no, no, we gotta stick him right where the sun don't fucking shine. So yeah, one. T Dub, I'm gonna be slightly a bit more generous than Spade Ace over here. Um. The, my biggest problem with Brock winning is the fact that it renders the Money in the Bank, Men's Money in the Bank uh, storyline moot for the third year in a row. Two years ago, Baron Corbin won it, unsuccessfully cashed in. Year after that, Braun Strowman won it, unsuccessfully cashed in. And now this year, Brock Lesnar has it, and he can either unsuccessfully cash in like the past two years, or it or it cashes in and he's champion. And the then whatever belt wants. he has is officially fucking dead. Yeah. So, whatever the case, this is yet the 30, 30 in a row where the men's money in the bank is fucked. Yeah. The last person to have the money in the bank and cashed in to get any sort of positive ovation was Dean Ambrose, who's now gone. And let's just point out, we're never going to get a run like, dear God, I can't believe I'm saying this, Carmella's run with the briefcase. Which, dear God, I can't believe those words just came out of my fucking mouth. <laughs> I will say, Carmella did have one of my favorite cash-ins. Yeah. Her, how, terrible, how terribly booked her actual title run was aside, the actual cash-in was amazing. It was. In fairness, Nevertheless, was. my rating for the show is a 2.5 out of 5. And that's where I'm sitting as well. The referee, the referee uh, bullshit is... Uh, is, uh, is uh, is is what knocks it down a few pegs, but the referee, still... the referee nonsense. Shane looking really strong and winning in his cage match, and uh, the large segments and the main events. Though uh, seek seek this seek this pip pop a few out for the for the uh, main uh, championship matches the. Uh, the uh, Rollins Styles feud, the Rollins Styles match, especially, is worth is worth seeking out, uh, for sure. <sighs> I am sad. You guys, uh, you guys feel like some undercard comedy? Do it. Sure. Let's do that, ladies and gentlemen. Twenty-four hours later, during the, the actually during the bro broadcast, you will note Mick Foley was announced to introduce. A new championship to the WWE family. Many people gone went from ooh to wait another fucking one. Well, I tuned in for that specific stack segment. I as soon as I found that oh Mick Foley's on okay cool, I turn on and I hear this. For those superstars looking to step up, I can tell you from experience that it takes a lot to make a mark and to be a champion in WWE. It is an obsession that consumes you throughout the day. Every single moment of every single minute of every single hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so it is with that spirit in mind, May I present to you the newest title in the WWE family. May I have a drum roll, please. May I present to you the 24-7 title. Now, as the name may imply, this title is to be defended anytime, any place, anywhere. Now you may ask yourself, is this open to all of the superstars on the Raw roster? And the answer is... No. It's open to every superstar on the Raw roster, the SmackDown roster. 
the 205 Live roster, the NXT roster. NXT UK, and who knows, maybe every now and then we'll have a visiting WWE legend competing for the prestige of the 24-7 championship. I figured you'd like, uh, you guys like that. I found, I was literally, Mick Foley theme, 8 bit. That was the first thing that popped up, Cactus Jack's theme. And it's kind of appropriate! In a weird way. <sighs> I said it on so... on Rift Down, and I will say it tonight. I, I appreciate the concept. The main plate is okay, does the job. State of the rest of the goddamn belt. By the way, uh, you made uh, the yeah. joke on Rift Down that it looks like, I believe the turn is a loony? A toony. A loony is a $1 coin. All right. The toony is a $2 coin. Um, we call it a toony because it's a $2 coin. Uh, yeah, it look, it, it, someone else made the meme, but it, it's made so much fucking sense. It looks like a gold toony. It does. And thank you, Mike, so, for the uh, 15 bits. Uh, just realized the title should have yeah. had its own theme song when it's on screen. Yakety Sax. Someone actually did make that meme, believe it or not. Well, when you see our truth running around with everyone chasing him, I suppose that makes sense. In fucking drag, no less. Oh, boy. So, I, I'll be the first. I'm going to get the positives out of the way. Yeah. Belt doesn't look the worst thing I've ever seen. Parts yeah, people are, are calling it the worst they've ever seen, but that's another story. Yeah, well, Hello, Adam people. Wilborn, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, people people kind of going overboard on that. Yeah. But, so, yeah. in my opinion, this title is not necessarily a bad thing. I've actually seen someone make a lot of sense about it. This gives, like, you know, some of the lower card people, some people that rarely ever get onto the televised matches... A chance to actually get themselves out there. Thank Is it the you. Best way to do it, dear God, no. As we have seen from the last two nights of segments, it's literally just been like Scooby Doo hijinks and not actual like matches. Which, let's be honest, after this week, I'm not sure if this belt will ever get an actual match. It's not intended to be an, an actual match or whatever. It's not like. It's the hardcore title minus the hardcore stuff and implication. It's literally the 24-7 rule when it comes to the ch literally the championship. Um, and thank you. you. My point. Exactly. The, uh, it's, it's not the best idea, but fuck, it's given EC3 TV time. EC3, Drake Maverick. We saw Brian Kendrick on SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah. When's so, the last time Brian Kendrick was seen anywhere near the main roster? <laughs> he was Cruiserweight Champion? I fucking forgot about him. <laughs> You're not alone. We thought, we, we, Tito and I thought he was fucking fired. I didn't. I knew he was still on the roster, but I, I haven't seen him on Raw SmackDown in years. Not since he was Cruiserweight Champion. Mm -hmm. That's how long ago it was. But. And, and just all we need to do is just use this as a comedy belt, give people TV time, and you'll be solid. And, you know, uh, they could easily have this uh, championship also run with whatever indie companies they're partnered with. And I have a special surprise as to which one they recently apparently are working with. Thank you, Bobber33. Reality of wrestling? Apparently. Oh. I'll get to that in the news That's segment. A, yeah, we got to get to that. Now, a lot of people are going, this is the worst belt design I've ever seen in my life. Oh, shit is shit. The WWE Divas Championship and Jeff Hardy's Immortal TNA Championship would like a word with you. I'm going to defend the second Immortal Belt. That one was better designed. It the was, first okay, one, the first so one stayed of its second one, fair enough, but still. The first one looked like it was constantly about to poke Jeff right in the genitalia. Yeah. 
Like, that did not look like a comfortable belt to wear. No. I mean, at this point, we could see that WWE is going all in on the um, silver aspects of the championship belts. Which, you know what? I'm fine with. I'm also, I've never I'm going to defend a belt that people apparently hate. I love, love, love the WWE ECW championship. It's not a bad looking belt. I'll, I'll, I'm with you. I actually had a kids replica of that a long time ago. I had, so uh, I'm with commemor- you on that one. It's not a bad looking belt. I had the uh, commemorative version, which is like life size, but just plastic instead. Yeah, it's, it's acrylic plastic. Yeah, I know what you're talking about there. I have my world belt yeah, is acrylic a plastic belt. commemorative. That thing is huge. It is. Big fucking main play. And big belts are awesome. Just stop hating on things. <laughs> Be positive, goddammit. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, back now, to us. Was... Anyway, we were saying something. Yeah, 24 7 belts. I like it. It's it As far as designs go, it's far from the best, but concept, good. Yeah, and people go, it's fucking stupid. It's like, That's the point. <laughs> it's stupid. It's supposed to be stupid. <laughs> it, think of it, for you free indie marks out there, think of it as the DDT Iron Metal Heavyweight Championship. No, it, Iron Man Heavy Metal. Weight. Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Championship. There we go. The All way that the, the way Joey up. Ryan did it, the parade it for, uh, oh, what, six months almost? Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. There's some great social media opportunities here. Yeah, because as they say, 24-7, it could happen even during a live event. Mm-hmm. It could happen. They'll make those worth going to, like... Hell, uh, T-Dub and well, I could be two- 24-7 champs if, they, if, if that ever happens. Or maybe Kofi could be Kofi three belts. Or Becky could be Becky two belts again. And by the way, good segue. Uh, good segue. Good segue. Uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. 24-7, a.k.a. Mr. Gacho. As a Mr. Gacho ass. New up, up, down, down heavyweight champion of the world. I was expecting Swagger the Christy to go undefeated for at least uh, another good three months. But I guess all good things must come to an end. <laughs> yeah, good, good job by Swagger the Christie. By the way, that's uh, Gentleman Jack Gallagher. For those uh, not watching the up, up, down, down gimmick on the YouTube, as you should, uh, he had a good, he got a great defense against Shelton Benjamin. Oh Mr. yeah, OG, VGOG, VGOG. There we go. So Although, yeah, nothing when, wrong with that. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> do you know who enjoyed? Do you know who I know enjoys Shelton's loss more than anyone? Who? Oh. Mia Yim. She probably enjoyed it. No. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you. <laughs> all Anyways, right, all uh, right. Uh, we are in the news section, correct? Yep. Yep. Then let's get the bad stuff out of the way, right? Yeah. Over so, um, so a little bit of behind uh, the scenes. We we originally had a four man booth this evening, but uh, Mattis chose not to to uh, join us for this evening because he did not believe covering the what we are about to cover was a good idea. However, whether it is legitimate or not, whether it is good or not, fuck Vince McMahon. Um, All right, so uh, just to go through this as fast as possible yeah. in rapid fire mode, if I if I may. Yes, do so. All right, so during a 2006 tour in Kuwait, uh, she was reportedly drugged and sexually uh, assaulted uh, by Ashley Massaro. We forgot to mention Ashley, Ashley Massaro. Yep, there Ashley Massaro. Sorry about that. Just trying to get through this as fast as possible. And according to the affidavit, she went to Vince McMahon about this and he wanted to keep it as quiet as possible to not interrupt their current deal with the tribute to the troops gimmicks. And this caused a lot of mental turmoil for Ashley. And WWE recently put out a statement a couple days ago denying this. And that's where we are now. So long story short, the actual affidavit is on Twitter, uh, basically claiming those things. 
And uh, when I read it, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people were reading it, uh, anger. Lots of it. Um, and I'll say this right now. If this somehow is like the drop that spills the bucket in Vince McMahon and gets Vince McMahon fucking gone from WWE as its chairman and CEO. Some people have said, well, this is not the truth. It's not, it's a legend. It's this. It's like, folks, the amount of shit Vince has pulled this year alone, or in the last two years alone, folks, this is a drop in the bucket. If, I mean, if it is, I mean, then it is. But believe me, I choose not to believe that that's the reason why he's fucking gone. Uh, also, uh, let's not forget that Vince once allegedly covered up a murder for Snuka. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like some of this one's... If there's one thing I know about uh, military is the fact that there's just... There are a lot of sexual assaults in the military, just a lot. Mm -hmm. Obviously not everyone, but, you know, it is a problem. So a story like this didn't really surprise me. Because yeah. people who are higher ups in the military, you know, there's a lot of them where essentially they're just like to wield their power. Like, it's the only thing they have in their life that yeah. gives them any sort of satisfaction. And it also attracts a lot of dude bros, so... Like, something like this doesn't really surprise me. Anyways, on to a happier note. Uh, yes. The wrestling world has come together to help donate to a fund for Ashley's daughter to help her out. Yeah, there's a GoFundMe, and uh, you can donate if you wish. So, there you go. Um, and some other news that's not as bad, but still kind of bummer type news. Gargano reportedly has a new injury that he's working through. Yeah, he's basically... Uh, he worked tag matches in whatever live events they allowed him to work in. And, of course, the TV, uh, the TV, uh, the NXT TVs up until uh, TakeOver 25. Uh, he's working tag matches or very at a very limited capacity. Uh, no one's telling us, okay, what's the severity of the knee injury? But at the fact that he's not working as much leads to me telling me he should be fine for TakeOver 25. But it's one of those cases where... Better safe than sorry, which is not a bad idea, all things considered. Yeah, at the very least, he is still able to wrestle, unlike the next injury, yeah. Ruby Ride, who has a shoulder injury and will be out for a little yeah, while. Yeah, torn labrum. Ouch. <laughs> Rest well, yeah. Ruby. Hopefully she comes back uh, healthier than ever and is able to be used better than she was beforehand because... She is better than how she was booked. Yeah. Anyone who's seen her uh, on NXT, and in fact, she had a really good uh, match for the SmackDown Women's title against Charlotte once on pay-per-view. She was great. <laughs> uh, also, something that'll make uh, you happy, Maddie. Guess who's got a new series on USA coming up? Give me a hell yeah! Stone Cold yeah, Steve Austin. Austin. He's going to have a 30-minute interview show where it's just off the cuff, uh, hanging out with somebody. Although there's one name that needs to be on there because how have these two never fucking met? Do you know who I'm talking about? Yes, you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Shark Boy. God damn it. Yeah! Fucking Shark Boy! <laughs> like, how have we gone from 2008... Till 2019, 11 years, and I haven't seen shit of these two interacting with each other. This it is has to bullshit. happen. It has to happen. <laughs> if we can get Black Machismo hanging out with Lenny Poffo, we deserve the what? What is life? If we need, if we get Black Machismo Jay Lethal to show up in full Macho Man regalia at all in, we can get Austin and, and Shark Boy chugging beers for half an hour on a USA television show after Monday Night Bullshit. I mean, raw. Also, thank you, Zachary. Also, I agree with you. Give me a shell. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you okay over there, bud? Yeah, I'm good. Just letting it all wash over me. <laughs> And speaking of letting all wash over you, uh, these following people will not be going to Super Showdown over in the Middle East in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Daniel Bryan, and uh, Alistair Black. All right, let's break it down. Owens made a request. It was accepted. Uh, Alistair Black, 
I believe the idea is he is not allowed by the company because uh, of sub tattoos may carry religious fervor or religious iconography, which may think, offend people. I think Saudi Arabia is one of those places that are anti-tattoo period, which wouldn't surprise me because, uh, because you know, they're very backwards with their thinking. What about The Undertaker and every goddamn one else in that goddamn card? But that's another story for another day. Uh, I think it's more of the religious iconography more than anything else that may offend. Because uh, if because if if they're so anti-tattoo, then what the fuck is Goldberg and Taker doing in there? You know, I didn't say it made sense. <laughs> like I said, I, I I buy more of the religious iconography iconography tattoos. More Very than rarely. just the tattoo thing itself. Look, I um, couldn't have yeah. Yokozuna and <clears throat> a broken Undertaker. Also, very rarely do theocracies make sense. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Daniel Bryan requested last year, and uh, they're just not going to fuck around with that shit, and I don't blame them, or Bryan. And Sammy, uh, same thing as last year, uh, he is a Syrian descent, and uh, right now even he don't want to touch... Saudi Arabia with a 10-foot pole. So, but technically, Saudi Arabia is banning him, quote-unquote, but, you know. I don't think I don't think Sammy would want to touch uh, Saudi Arabia with a 10-foot pole anyway, so there you go. Yeah, so that's I do the main feel reason bad for the rest. And I do feel bad for any wrestlers that don't want to go but feel obligated to because they're not high enough on the card to request off. Hmm. Uh, They're going to need a whole uh, lot of bodies uh, in that uh, 50-man battle royal. Anyways, uh, this week we also had the 20-year anniversary of the death of Owen Hart. It uh, is great to see so many people share their stories with him. There's a wonderful uh, audio documentary that was produced. I mean, I I gave it a, a light plug last week uh, on the show. Post-wrestling, John Pollock and Wei Ting. Uh, you may have heard of them. Uh John Pollock specifically put it put up a, a, a great audio documentary on uh, Owen's last day and uh, the the events of in and around Owen's uh, death and it, it's it's sad but it's a wonderful documentary uh, it's a it's a forty five minutes so if if, you, if you're a podcast person and like myself uh, have all the time in the world when he went taking public transit to work it's a wonderful time killer if nothing it's very interesting. A lots of reveal, a lot of revealing like, stuff in there. If you have never, if you don't know the circumstances surrounding the the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the 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 event itself, so to speak. Do you know my favorite part about uh, the 20th anniversary of this is hearing all the fans talk about their interactions with Owen, and I never heard anything negative. It's always he always made time out of his day to, if a fan wanted a picture, he always when I was waiting to get a picture with him. He he always just wanted to uh, just make the fans happy, and that's uh, a lost just, art nowadays. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a lost art. You do see, still see a lot of that, but like it's just always great to hear that. It, it yeah. always puts a smile on my face to always hear about how someone just always loves takes some pictures with fans. If nothing else, kids. the ratio of wrestlers willing to hang out with fans. Is uh, is more positive than negative now, if nothing else. But Owen, it was a pioneer of that. Always generous for this time. Yeah, even even though he was like a heel at the end of his run, he was still like, if the kid was like, "Hey, Owen, can I take a picture with you?" He's like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Like, ah, uh, just that. That's that. Ah, uh, why did he have to go? Anyways, it's some good news. Uh, yeah. So, Bobbert uh, linked me to a YouTube video for Reality Wrestling, which is they put up their latest pay per view for free on YouTube. Mm. And it got over 16,000 views, which I was like, okay, what happened here that got them so many views? So, their main event, they had a 20 man Royal Rumble style battle royal to determine the new ROW champion. And do you want to know who appeared in that battle royal? Don't tell me our truth yeah. showed up. No, no, no. This was like a few weeks ago. Okay, okay. So the person that showed up... How do I say this? Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh! oh no! Well, Booker Damn. T is, 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 is under contract with WWE, so that makes sense. Catch a Sono? Are awesome. I was watching that, and I just fucking marked the sh the fuck jesus christ that was amazing oh my the god whole... k 
Curious Hero doing an actual thing! I think this is definitely one of those... This is one of the parts of the Battle Royale where the roof flew off. There were a few <laughs> moments like that. Alright, alright. I uh, know Raw was an entertaining uh, Royal Rumble, Battle Royale style thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also got to see uh, the reunion of some tag teams, which is mm. nice. Got to see the return of E. Snow, former ROW champion. And at the end of the of the Battle Royal, the winner was Ruthless Ryan Davidson. Finally, after the past several years, capturing the ROW title. Congratulations to him. He yeah. has definitely earned it. And if you want to watch the full show, it's on YouTube for free. So yeah, um, this leads me to believe that there's some sort of agreement between Reality of Wrestling and NXT now. I mean, there, there, there obviously is an agreement with WWE and ROW. I mean, considering Booker T is under WWE contract, technically. Also, uh, Matty, what independent wrestling company has a working relationship with Reality of Wrestling? I want to say Evolve. No. Think near my neck of the woods. VCW. Yes. You're, you're stomping ground. Current, you're home promotion. Yeah. Gino was the current VCW heavyweight champion. Yeah. And he was also in that Battle Royal. So I'm thinking... You know, we got our own Battle Royal coming up in July, so maybe, just maybe, we'll see an NXT guy there as well. T-Dub, you're going to that show, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Hopefully, you know, I, I'm I'm, I'm going to try. But, yeah, that, that yeah, I, I could definitely see why Bobbert wanted me to watch that match. Can't say I blame you, Bobbert. Send me a link. I might watch that later, actually. Yeah, like... It's, the thing is, like, that Battle Royal is definitely a lot of fan service for people who have been watching ROW for, like, at least the past four years, like me and Bobbert have. Like, to see, like, the Brothers Lockhart re reunion, I was like, yes, that's awesome! Oh, that's some good <laughs> stuff. Like, oh, they, this is a, it was a really good Battle Royal. Just really good stuff. And the whole show overall was pretty good. That was the good news. Another! Yeah, and, uh, and the show is only, uh, is actually just under two hours. Oh, okay. Nice and nice and watchable. Yeah, so it's not going to, you know, you just put a, just a couple hours, put it down for it. Uh, it. It won't even take up a full afternoon. Fair. Sounds good to me. Anyways, that is all the news that I have for the night. All right. That was, uh, that was uh, well, <laughs> shorter, all, all things considered. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me let me hit the button over here and say it's time for your emails and comments of the week. It's on the at the WrestleCast at gmail.com. We begineth, ladies and gentlemen, with uh, Cure Crystal. Uh, he sent one first. Uh, he forgot to finish it. He said, "Can I send it again?" Okay, sure. So we begin with him. Before I begin with the show, I uh, show review. I need to get this out of my system. <clears throat> Rant mode! I'm not going to hit the button. Don't worry, dude. I get too much admin to do. Why in the fuck? And this is all caps, by the way. Why in the fuck did they have to give it the fucking briefcase the worst wrestler in the company? Vince McMahon, I hope you burn in hell, you fucking piece of shit. Brock Lesnar, I hope you die in a slow, painful death. This is the worst thing ending to a pay-per-view I've ever seen in my life. Minus this? five stars. No, if you're gonna do it, do it right. Oh, this oh, is, is the worst pay per view ending I've ever witnessed. No, no, no. If we're gonna do it, if we're gonna do SCU, we're gonna fucking do it right. This was the worst pay per view ending I ever sat through. SCU. You no. Know, SCU. I know. We had to see a part timer win the belt, win the briefcase again. How many times we had to see a part timer win? You know, I cannot wait to see the show in Southern Las Vegas. <laughs> Ace, you want to jump in on this? Takes it, FCU is a trio. Minus five stars. Close uh, enough. Close enough, I guess. SCU. SCU. Minus, Minus five stars. stars. All right. <sighs> Let me get back to the email now. Anyways, besides that, the match was still good. A lot of opportunities for the guys to show their stuff. As for the women's match, it was pretty cool. Of course, Bailey winning the match and cashing it in on Charlotte is the icing on an already delicious cake. 
AJ versus Seth. Oh boy, that was great. Easily a tie for match of the night with a women's ladder match. Kofi and Owens was great as well. Tony uh, Tony versus Arya was neat. Ray winning the due to referee botch. Oh look, this is my this is my surprise device. Overall, give this pay-per-view a 4 out of 5. You are more generous than we were on this one, Kier. And so is Brian Zane, who gave the pay-per-view an A. I mean, in fairness, it, it was wor- for us, it was working towards an A, in, in a sense. For me, it was working towards a 3.5, because those ref botches were still pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, we're a little, we're a little more stringent. The, the referee is supposed to be invisible in this case. Oh, thank you. Thank well, you very much, sir. Supposed Tina. to be in business. Yes. Anyway, next up. Oh, yeah, actually. Uh, Ace, you got to hear something cool. TW, you know what it is. Ooh. French. Oh! Ah, Anybody else got a ringing in their ears? <laughs> you get used to it. <laughs> well, hello, Aku. Thank you, Mr. T. Dub Anderson. Well, hello, Ape Noggers. I wish I could say happy days or here again, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Meantime, the paper I'm not gonna cover the pay-per-view raw smackdown. We got two pay-per-views coming up this week. Let's talk about the first one. Money in the Bank 2019. I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Both world title matches delivered. Especially universal title match between Rollins and Styles. I mean, it's Rollins and Styles for the world title. This is huge. And I'm happy that Bailey won the uh, Money in the Bank briefcase and beat Charlotte in the, uh, for the SmackDown Live uh, women's belt. Which uh, relieved Becky to do, 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 do double duty and focus on Charlotte Two, aka Lacey Evans. There are sadly some down moments, uh, mostly Joe versus Mysterio match, which ended up in a up in a minute, and sadly Ray suffered a dislocated shoulder. Ah, that explains a lot. Nice versus Davari. Sorry, that was just average. The referees did some stupid botches that were uh, intentional, like uh, the steel cage. And the Raw Women's uh, Title Match at Den, the Ben's Money in the Bank match. First of all, it was insane and should have been the match of the night until the ending. No, it's not the returning Bray Wyatt. Brock Lesnar is your Money in the Bank. Give it credit. Uh, I like the sight of him beat beat boxing with the beat dancing with the briefcase with like a boombox. But really, Lesnar. Lesnar, I have a nightmare about this. About this, what happened to if he beats Rollins at Super Showdown? It's going to happen. The match, I mean, and he catches it in on Kofi, making him a dual champion to promote SmackDown Live on Fox. I know it's stupid, but knowing how desperate Vince is, you know he will. French Otaku, it is not outside the realm of possibility. I now have a place to set blame if this happens. Do not Dave front Otaku. He's scared to in fairness, he's scared too. I won't Dave you. I'm just gonna point out you put this thought in my head. I don't like it. Me neither. We none of us do. None of us do. Eh, enough of that shit. All Elite Wrestling's double, do, double or Nothing. Go watch it. Go watch it. Outside of the cancel match between Pac and Adam Page. And Hangman will have to an opponent for sure, I think. It's going to be a blast. TakeOver 25. Also excited to watch it. Matches that I'm looking for are Gargano versus Cole. Baszler versus Shirai for the, and, and the NXT Tag Belts. A ladder match. Still got to see the uh, latest episode, but man, I need this. Winners, Bailey being the SmackDown Live Women's Belt. All I hope is that she doesn't get the bad treatment like she did on Raw. 
Dean Iceman Malenko joining the AEW uh, AEW Great Edition to the backstage team. That happened earlier today, so I don't know why it, it, we missed it, but it's, it's, it's a good call. Uh, Styles, did we cover? No, we didn't cover uh, Malenko joining the uh, Monster Tita. Yeah, Malenko is now working uh, for all the He is a coach slash AEW. producer, yep. So, yeah, can have some good technical expertise. Yes. Styles versus Rollins with the Universal Belt. Best match of the night. Money by, and Money in the Bank 2019. Losers. Well, say goodbye to Ruby Wright, who's out with a shoulder injury. Similar to Ray Ray. Good news. She went through surgery and it was successful. However, we don't know how long she'll be out and when she'll get her next shoulder surgery on her left side. Ow. Joining D. Brian Kevin Owens is Aleister Black, who will not participate in Saudi Arabia's Super Show because of his tattoos. Why not making him wearing a bodysuit? Then again, not interested in, his sh in this show in the slightest. Poor Saw Monster and Jay Hunter lost their mother through the week, uh, throughout the week of Money in the Bank. L let's uh, qualify this. Uh, Saw Monster lost his uh, mother a few years back. Uh couple of years back, as a matter of fact. Jay Hunter, on the other hand, it was last week, and yeah, that sucks. My prayers go to both of them, and yes, it's on the 20th anniversary of the, the death of On Hart, which is sadder. WWE, for the following Cardinal Sins, making Bork, Laser, Mr. and Money in the Bank, and Seth, Mustafa Ali, or Drew McIntyre, who deserve better than being henchmen for Shane. Uh, the re the re the reveal of the WWE 24/7 belt, which looks ugly as fuck. It looks like an arcane coin that I want to use for something more enjoyable. I like playing Motor Mortal Kombat. By the way, the eleventh episode is good. Situation between uh, the late Ashley Massaro. I'm not going to read that, but uh, uh, understandable. On a lighter note, I'm excited for E3 and Evo 2019 this and this summer. Also, Tuesday, Thursday Night Dynamite. Or Tuesday Night Dynamite. Whatever. Anywho, enjoy the pay-per-views, and I will see you around. E3 and Evo, you, you speak in my language. Yeah, and then, and, then, and then in June, summer games done quick, brah. Oh, yes. Our bodies are not ready yet. No, no, they, they will not, be. Though. They will not be. <laughs> we will enjoy it, though. We will definitely enjoy it. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, those are your emails and comments of the week. You can send them over the Russellcast at gmail.com. We shall return, ladies and gentlemen, and others, with our preview of all of these wrestlings. First show ever, double or nothing. Big good times, big times, historic times. When we come back, don't go far. And now a word from our sponsors. Hello, wrestling fans. Cole Cabana coming to you live from the One Hour Tease Arena in beautiful Chicago, Illinois. The pro wrestling action has been great so far. As you can see, Joey really dominating the ring so far. There's a beautiful belly-to-back suplex. And... Uh-oh. Looks like Joey's shirt has been ripped. What's up with that? You ripped my shirt. Let's go check an instant replay, see exactly what happened. There you can see Joey's shirt ripped from the collar, and that's not good when you're trying to wear your pro wrestling t-shirt. Man, you ripped my shirt. It's my only shirt. Joey. Hey, it looks like Ryan from One Hour Tees just threw Joey Ryan a brand new t-shirt. Thanks, pro wrestling tees. ProWrestlingTees.com, over 3,000 wrestling t-shirts designed and sold by pro wrestlers. Wrestlers such as Steve Austin, CM Punk, Macho Man, Mick Foley, DDP, Andre the Giant, Jake the Snake, Hexaw, Jim Duggan, Scott Hall, Ted DiBiase, Cole Cabana, Joey Ryan, Cliff Compton, and the entire Bullet Club. All stores owned by pro wrestlers. Support pro wrestling today and visit ProWrestlingTees.com. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. After a hard day at the office, working up a big thirst, many professionals reach for the smooth taste of mellow yellow. Woo, baby! Mellow Yellow, the taste that beats Mountain Dew. 
And now, Mellow Yellow has pictures and all the facts on your favorite NWA wrestlers. Ric Flair, Sting, the Road Warriors, and even my pretty face. Head to your favorite store and collect all 12. Woo! Take it for Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream. Make the Mellow Yellow move. This is WMOB Mobile. 12 on your channel dial and 12 in the TV ratings. We all love Mick Foley, right? Everyone loves Mick Foley? What a, what a, what a bad... I felt so bad. He's standing out there. He's a living legend. What the fuck was he holding? Like, what? Like, no thought. Well, hey. No thought went into that. Like, what is it? Oh, it's 24-7. So what do you put on it? 24-7. Like, no thought. Just And, and you know what? Here's oh. another thing. Our titles are going to look good. Good lord. I, I'm gonna, I saw a graphic of that, that new title and I almost threw up. I'm going to get so much heat and I haven't said a word. Who cares? We don't work for them. <laughs> It does. Well, it's going to be the first time for all elite wrestling. We're back here on the Russell Cast, presented by RV, Tim and Tim, and on the Broken Infinite.com, on the my dudes, podcasts, and places. Man, I'm JT DeBK, and our guest, Spade Ace from Toker Rips Live, joining, uh, joining us. Who oh boy. Oh, God, big. that's right, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Did you forget you were here? I forget a lot of things. <laughs> uh, Do you ever forget about Common Rider Forze, aka your favorite Common Rider? I know this for a fact. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's not my favorite, but I like it just fine. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Even that ending? Look, yes. it's got its flaws. How about that movie? Huh? Oh, okay, D-dub. okay. Let, let's take it down a notch. T-Dub. We're all friends here. T-Dub, there's no need to piss off the guest. He's cool. But, but that, that, that's why you hired me. Look, if you want to troll Ace, you could do it on the Toonami call we do every week. I know. You've been doing a, a good job of that. Yeah, like how uh, people would rather watch Naruto than Bleach. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, Ace. I tried to stop. We oh. will settle this later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, we're, let's just get to it. Oh, also, Elite Rinoco. Wrestling. Oh, Rinico got a good burn. Oh, Spade Ace. Oh, God. <laughs> do do, do uh, you see the chat, Ace? Ace, do you see the chat? Ha! Joke's on you. I actually don't. Oh. <laughs> uh, you'll check the VOD and you'll be, you'll be, you'll, you'll be like slightly burned. Just slightly. Let's Probably. get to the... Th- Can we get to the thing? Let's get to the thing. All Elite Wrestling, yes, that t-shirt company you keep burning for like the last five months. Well, not anymore, motherfuckers. They got a wrestling show. They sold it out. StarCast happened. They sold that. Well, I assume they sold that fucker out, too. And uh, the MGM Grand Garden Arena in, uh, well, it's called Paradise, Nevada. It's Las Vegas, for God's sakes. All Elite Wrestling, Double or Nothing, is the name of the PPV. It's their very first show. The uh, the spiritual sequel to last year's All In, in more ways than one. We could tell you about the story, but the best way to put it is watch Being the Elite. Watch uh, Cody's uh, Nightmare Family YouTube channel, Road to Double or Nothing. Good call. All, the, the, the All In stuff as well. 
And uh, the AEW has uh, their uh, YouTube channel as well. Worthwhile checking out if you want the, the, the background of all the stuff that's happened in the last year, pretty much. Year and a half, two years, maybe? Long ass time. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, we got two pre pre show matches and we got a main card. Let's get to it on the main card, which is on the uh, pre show, which is FRWE free on uh, multiple platforms, including the YouTubes. Uh, they have Kip Sabian taking on Sammy Guevara. I haven't seen too much of Kip Sabian, but I've seen a few matches with Sammy G, and he is great. Yes. This is going to be a great opener for the show. Should be a solid opener. Um, do you want to call the predict the, the winner or loser on these, or do you just want to? Uh, I think Sammy G is going to win. He's right. the big star that they've been promoting on their YouTube channel, so I could see him winning. I predict a good match, though. Agreed. <laughs> uh, and Sammy Guevara for the win. He's technically the bigger star, and I think he might get a bigger pop. But you never know with this crowd. It's it's all brand new here. A lot, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of new faces. The 21-man Casino Battle Royale. Here's how on, this Maddie. works, folks. Matty, how do you what? like that pun, by the way? Casino Battle Royale? Uh, that's a wonderful pun. And appropriate. Ah! It's and appropriate. Because I love the rules of this one. It's a 21-man Battle Royale. Here's how this works. Uh... Young Bucks, and uh, they've been running around trying to get people in this uh, in, in this battle royal. Every participant gets a card of four suits. Like they'd be like uh, the clubs, diamond, uh, you know, clubs, spades, diamonds, hearts. Uh, you got a punk card. You enter the ring first uh, you, the, via the suit, and I believe it was either the Joker or an Ace. I think it was uh, Joker enters last. Joker enters last. So it's a delayed entry battle royal, but different. And I like the concept. They should do more of that. That's a wonderful concept. And the, if this is anything like the all-in battle royal, I think this is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Now, I, they have four I, to be announced spots, but the announced... <laughs> and, of course, Reniko, Jaka, Jaka starts playing the EOP. Oh, I was spade, thinking. Spade Ace and that. Spade Joker! A True. Also. All spade. of the above. Yes. And Ace and I just got it, and the thumb is up there. The participants are as follows Sunny Kiss. It's the Sunny Kiss. Brandon Cutler. Ace Romero. Good call. Fat fuck, but he can move. Glacier. Yes. That guy. That Glacier. Brian Pillman Jr. Yes. The son of Brian Pillman, and he is. I'm seeing Russell in person. He's good. He's. He, I've seen. I've seen him in uh, in um, uh, in uh, in uh, Major League Wrestling. I concur with that statement. And he's uh, he's he's just as quirky as his pop. I'm, I'm going to tell you oh, right now. And he's got his pop's him, quirkiness. I do love how um, he uh, went through the indie scene properly before you know make you know he made his name the proper way, which is really nice. Good call. Going around the indie scene. He didn't just go straight to WWE like I'm sure he could have. But he, he did they, He did well, and he, it's paid off for him, too. Sunny Days. Uh, Ma MJF, Maxwell, Jacob Freeman. Joey Janela, Dustin Thomas, Billy Gunn. Yes. Jimmy Havoc. Michael. Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy fucking Havoc. Yes. Michael Nakazawa. Michael Nakazawa? Yes. Michael Nakazawa. Michael Nakazawa. Michael, Michael Nakazawa. Nakazawa. <laughs> For those wondering, if we we are assuming that someone is watching this, uh, watching or listening to this in Las Vegas right now, and we're hoping that's an earshot of one of the of one of the young bucks because we want to trigger him some more. Well, most you know, notably Matt Jackson. Most notably Matt Jackson because comedy. Michael Nakazawa. It's it's the new May 19th. Michael Nakazawa. The new May 19th. Jungle Boy. Isaiah Cassidy. Mark Queen or Quen. 
It's it's spelled M A R Q Q U E N. Yeah, that name is new to me. Yeah. Versus the Luchasaurus and the former Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger, a.k.a. Sean Spears. <laughs> I hope he does a spear during a match so they can say, Spear with his spear, spears. <laughs> spear, 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 spear. And four spots, four competitors yet to be announced. They will probably be appearing as surprise entrants in uh, the thing. Um, I, I, have, I, have a, I have an idea of who one of who the final entry could be in my head. It's who you got? It seems a little random, but it could be him. We should the also mention that I the believe... winner receives uh, is one of the two final uh, contenders for the AEW World Championship. We should probably mention that as well. Yep, and one of my predictions is that the final man could be someone who I will refer to as Johnny Elite. Going to be honest, fill in the blank for me. You're not picking John Hennigan, are you? Yes. It could be Johnny him. Mundo. Okay. Oh, you know, do, okay. I know that name. Yeah, you know, he changes his name everywhere he goes. Yeah, he's Johnny Impact on Impact. He was Johnny Mundo in the indie scenes and, uh, and Lucha Underground more famously. Uh, Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, John Morrison, that guy. Lots of names. And lots of names, and no, I can kind of see that. I know a lot of people are thinking it could be Moxley, but who knows? Maybe he'll be uh, the opponent for Hangman Page, because maybe Hangman Page during the middle of the show will come out like, you know what? Screw this. I still want to fight. Come on. I'll fight anyone. I'll fight anyone. I'll f I'll screw this knee injury. I hate Punk. He ain't killing, taking me down that easily. I want a fucking opponent. And then let's go out. Let's Your go on. wish is granted. And then the roof flies off. Yes. For one of multiple times, I would assume. Now, who is the other guy who is going to win? The winner of the main event, which was announced this week, but we will get to that when it's time to to tell you what the main event is. Uh, there's On Wikipedia, there's no particular order, so we'll just go from the top to the bottom, except for the uh, match number two on the Wikipedia card, which has us starting with SoCal Uncensored, uh, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky, a.k.a. SCU. I see you taking on, and I'm so happy for Nuclear Convoy. He's happy in his head place. Strong Hearts, Shima, T Hawk, and El Lindemann. And I hope so I'm this saying is that correctly. The These three guys are representing OWE, right? Yes, those are the guys. Then why are all three of them Japanese? <laughs> I'm just gonna smile and nod and just walk over there. <laughs> oh wait, I saw um, SU versus uh, some Chinese guys. They went. They actually went over to OWE in China. Yeah, they they actually went match. over to China and had a, a six man tag there. Great match. Yeah, it was really good. Um, but I'm sure this match will be good as well. I mean, you got Sima in the ring. I mean, he's he's a legend. For he's been multiple here reasons, I'm sure. Yeah, he's great. So, yeah, this should be a really good match, and uh, I think that SoCal and Censored will probably win. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Strong Hearts won either. It could go either way. I don't care. It's going to be great. Yeah. Next up, uh, the uh, one of two women's matches that evening, Britt Baker versus Nyla Rose versus Kylie Ray. Kylie Ray is I'm a putting rookie. My money, I'm go putting ahead. my money on the former Diamond of the Row, Kylie Ray. So you're familiar with that. Nyla Rose yeah, um, is a transgender was... woman and is a badass. And Britt Baker knows Adam Cole, baby! And she's a dentist. Yes. She's the ultimate doctor. boon in the ring. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I am very familiar with Kylie Ray. watched her on ROW for quite mm. some time. She was a very, very good baby face. Uh, think of her as Bailey, but without getting uh, screwed up by bad booking. <laughs> yeah, th that's pretty much what it is. 
Minus, minus, minus the 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 uh, the, the the giant inflatable inflatable IR flailing tube man, obviously. Yeah. Also, you know the smell she has on her top. For a while, yeah. that was actually Pikachu. God damn it! Now I'm cheering for Kylie Ray now. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume she eventually changed that for copyright reasons. But ladies and gentlemen, it's just that easy. <laughs> and wait, there's more for five payments of five ninety five. Anyway, uh, uh, next up, and this is no particular order, so we don't know where this is going to land up. But Cody Rhodes versus Dustin Rhodes, brother versus brother. But if he asks Cody, generation versus generation. Do it, Cody. End the Attitude Era forever, once and for all. Do it. Cody, but I I have a strong feeling that if it's not Jericho v. Omega, this gets match of the night. Um, it could be a dark horse. It could be. It's my dark horse pick. I will I, I will fully admit that, but if Jericho and Omega don't get match of the night, blame Cody and Dustin. That's that's my bet right there. I mean, I've always been a fan of Dustin, so I'm looking forward to this regardless. Mm. Yeah, the natural versus the night, the American nightmare. That's going to be something to watch. Speaking of something to watch, the AAA World Tag Team Championship. The champs, the Young Bucks, Matt, Matt and Nate Jackson, taking on the Lucha Brothers, Penta L Zero M, and Ray Phoenix, aka uh, Phoenix, and the other guy, Cerro Miedo, Pentagon Jr. Yeah, this is going to blow all the roofs down, all the walls down, everything down. This is going to be rad. And I expect the Lucha Brothers to regain their gold. Makes sense. And uh, next up, the second women's match, a six-man tag team match, a Joshi match, uh, in the in the literal sense of the word, because it's Aja Kong, Yuka Sakazaki, and Emi Sakura taking on Hikaru Shida, Riho Abe, and Ryo Mizu, uh, Mizuna, uh, Mizunami. 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 I almost had it, damn it. I almost had Say it. that five times fast. <laughs> yeah, this is Joshi, this is Joshi territory, and uh, holy shit, Aja Kong. Yeah, she's the only one out of the six that I'm personally familiar with. But uh, and I, for that reason, I'm going with her team. And I expect her to be all of the ultimate heel because that's what she is. That's what she's good at. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she's got to get a pop. Oh, yeah. She's because, got to get know, a pop. She's a legend. She, she's she's gonna, a legend. Yeah. And uh, again, this is no particular order. The best friends, Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta. Take it on Angelico and Jack Evans. I'm going to go with Angelico and Evans to win. But this is still going to be an awesome match, and I expect Chuck Taylor to be all of the awesome bad guy. Mm. Like, I want them to walk out in Scott Hall gear. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come come out with sunglasses and smokes so that people well, go, those aren't best friends. Those are dicks in real life. Well, we uh, we we have seen Chuck Taylor smoke on being the elite. <laughs> yep. I want to come out in sunglasses and smokes, and I want to have them halfway down already, just to show I don't care about anything but this cigarette. And I do like how on uh, um, being the elite they've been characterized, where uh, Trent Brada is sort of like the insecure one, and Chuck Taylor is just the the one that just. Hates everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's just absolutely insane. Like, he was threatening the Young Bucks family, including their children. Yeah. <laughs> just because they were in the Battle Royal. To quote Chuck Taylor, I'm not going to do no fucking Battle Royal. <laughs> Uh, 
And of course, I'm finally, trying not to do a spit take. I was trying to. I was drinking my water. <laughs> so uh, following that, we get to our main event, where the winner of this match will take on the winner of the Casino Battle Royale, and that is the rematch: Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. And there's no ambiguity or mystery of this. This was announced as the main event. This is it. Jericho Omega 2. And I'm hoping that Omega wins. That's what I'm hoping. That'll be my call as well, but I would not be surprised if they do the if Jericho won. So if I may. Sure. I I could see this going either way. Because you know what, this is the this is the big thing. Yeah. And then whoever takes on whoever wins the casino battle royale, which Looks cool, and we have four people still at enter that. But me being cynical, at this point, the champion's either going to be Omega or Jericho. Mainly for shock value. But, as a note, if you don't know about this, the match for this title is not happening on this pay-per-view. No, no, it's happening, uh, and I believe it will probably happen in July. Which in July or August, lie, more than likely, yeah. Which I know it's a stat card, and it's kind of hard to work this stuff out, but I feel like that is a mistake. And let me explain my reasoning on this. All right. You want this pay-per-view to go down. You want this to be the historic pay-per-view people want it to be, correct? Yeah. Well... You have a vacant championship for a brand that is starting up, right? It's not you even want... vacant. It has to, it's, it's been established, but it, they're just going through the motions of uh, crowning the yeah. champion. You you want someone who basically can spearhead this, have a more or less have a face to the company besides Cody, who they're billing as you know one of the top guys, but not the top guy. You want that to be known to the known to the world that this is our champion, come fucking get us, kind of idea. I feel like not doing it on this pay per view is a mistake. Like, the you should have they should have uh, at least figured out one of the combatants before this. Well, no, so no company ever decides a world champion on their first ever show. It took Ring yeah, of traditionally, Honor traditionally, any startup is just we just want to get as many eyeballs and many asses in seats and many eyeballs watching as humanly possible. Yeah, Ring of Honor had their first show on February twenty third, two thousand two. They haven't champion. had a. They, I don't think they had a world champion until two thousand three, two thousand four. No, I 2002. think. Two thousand two. Okay. July twenty seven, two thousand two. It was Loki. It took five months. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll give you that. Like, it's still more... like from an outsider perspective like you want to bring people away from you know WWE to watch your brand to be fair they don't you have to need... work that hard they didn't they didn't have to work too hard to, to... okay to be fair to be fair but like for the casual person who doesn't watch that much wrestling you want to give them reason to come watch you mm -hmm. and Honestly, from an outside perspective, I don't recognize a lot of the names on this card. So that makes things a little difficult. There's not a lot of gimmicks to it. There's not stuff that's going to make me go, oh, this sounds like it's going to be cool. Which is why I feel like this is definitely one of those problematic areas. Not a horrible area. Like they can, they can work through it. Like the content could speak for itself. Yeah. But it feels like this is definitely an uphill battle. And I can agree with that. I would I would counter by saying they're not exactly going after WWE directly. That's not their intent. It's eventual that it's going to be, oh, they're going to you know fight the Fed. It's eventually going to happen. But the intention is, let's get it off the ground. Let's do some good shows. And we have to bankroll. Let's put the fucker on pay-per-view. Let's make some money off this thing. And it's smart to not go for, I think it's smart to not go for a world championship on the first show because traditionally is you just want to get the first show done and dusted and 
It's one of those, it's going to be a feel-good moment slash, okay, now we can get a couple surprises in. And honestly, I'm surprised that they even announced world title implications on this show. That honestly surprised me. I was like, oh, okay, we're speeding this up. Because after this, we're always going to have our top two contenders. Because traditionally, you want to build up the, 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 the roster a little bit so that your fans have an idea of who you want to you who you want your fans to cheer and boo in the ascent to the world championship. It's not a foreign concept, but I agree. But at the same time, they got the entire summer to, to get that built to, to start building up and building up. And they're gonna get that casual audience when the when the TNT show starts. I got you there. But I get you. It's a legitimate. It's a legitimate concern, though. It's it's not a bad. It's, it's definitely not bad. Don't get me wrong on that. It's the a case of I think debuted a world champion on their first show. I believe was TNA when they had that battle royal for the NWA title. Yeah, when that was when they had the. Uh, we're talking the the Asylum two hour weekly pay per view gimmick. Yeah. Was that two hour pay per view or was it one hour? I believe it was a two hour gimmick. It was a two hour weekly right. pay per view. Yeah. And even then, they they were building. They 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 had to do the build up thing. Plus, they had, they had vacated the the championship, so it just it just played into it. And it wasn't already established title with decades behind it. Yeah. In like, fairness, I can't think of a company that created a new title out of thin air and ran on their first show and crowned a champion. Like, I can't think of a company that did that. Okay, uh, let's qualify that. Any legitimate championship. For those about to go, what about the 24 title? And I would go, what about the 24 ti- and 4, 24 also, 7 title? Also, that's not a title that debuted on a brand new show, brand new no. promotion. Like, I think can't think of a promotion that, you know, on their first show crowned their first world champion. Not even NXT like, when I think about it. I think they no, took no, like a legitimate yeah, year when Triple H took, over, took that show over. Yeah, to, to establish a, a world title. Yeah, and they had a tournament. And they had a tourney to do that. And what they're doing here is a tournament. In in, in sense, it's a well, championship eliminator is more than anything else. But it's a there's a It's not a tournament. tournament, it's an eliminator. Don't get Vince McMahon on this for God's sakes. We don't need that. But That's there's a, they're they're Morgan. establishing a story here. Which is not a bad idea. Yeah, I'm going to look at this. Oh. When does, I'm going to look up when CZW crowned their first champion because now I'm curious. Ooh, I know, I know C4 took them a couple years to get that established. Let's see. I think two or three years, I want to say. Let me Google no, that real I, quick. I, <laughs> I, definitely, I see it from your guys' point of view, too. Like I, I defer oh, to you on this one. Uh, Let's see, March twenty. Now, like I said, it's 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 a good point though. It's not a bad point. We're we're definitely, uh, you yeah. know, it's coming from like a back like a writer's background kind of idea. No, like, definitely. You want to you want to establish your brand as quickly as you can. In and that's what they're survive. doing. They they are doing exactly that. And you know what? At least they got a belt. Because <laughs> like I'm I'm gonna put it this way. From the amount of promotions you guys have mentioned tonight alone, and it, as I can see, indie wrestling making a giant resurgence. There's a lot out there now. And like, and AEW has a lot of big names. Don't get me wrong, like Kenny Omega. Even like non-traditional wrestling fans or like people just getting into it have heard the name at this point. They know who the guy is. They know who Jericho is. They, they have the big names to it. But that's about all they've got right now, so they need to be able to establish what they can do, what sets us apart from the competition. And I'm assuming they'll be able to do that with just uh, the shows because one of the things they've been doing in all their interviews is saying that unlike WWE, we're going to be a more sports-orientated company with stats and having wins and losses matter. So the winners of matches go higher up the cards and losers go further down. So stuff like that. Which... Which is good. Like I see the positives to that, and that also worries me in a way because, sure, you got wins and loss records. It's more sports oriented, but 
the minute someone stops becoming popular, what do you do about that? Also, they said, they've, they've addressed that. They say if somebody starts, you know, if somebody starts getting popular and it takes off, that's where they're going with it. Yeah. They said, you know, if something takes off and we weren't prepared for it, screw it. That, that person, we're going to launch them to the moon. And I would, I would expect the reverse to be true as well. Then there's the, uh, then of course, in my head is just injuries, all that kind of jazz, people possibly leaving the company, yada, yada, yada. Like there's a, there's a lot of factors to well, that. Well, that's what happens with any wrestling company though. Well, I mean also just in the effect of keeping an actual scorecard on each wrestler kind of idea. Yeah. Like the, the, the whole, you know, wrestlers getting injured or wrestlers coming and going that happens with every wrestling company. And they have said that they already have storylines worked out six months to a year in advance. That's a thing that I raise an eyebrow at. That's the one thing and they've I always think... done. If you've watched Being the Elite, every storyline on that show is thought up six years to a year in advance. Which, you know, is a good thing. I, I will absolutely say that's a good thing. Have the plan in place. Dear God, it terrifies me if things go off the rails. Yeah, uh, these guys, you know, they're used to chaos happening in wrestling. They've been in the wrestling business for years and years and years, especially with Cody, who has been in the wrestling business since birth. So I have uh, full confidence that as far as the storylines go, these guys have it unlocked because these are the guys that booked one of my favorite storylines of Marty Skrull joining Bullet Club. That was all mm. a full year in advance. All right, here we go. So Kevin Steen was the first C4 champion. Uh, June 6, 2009, the promotion started in 2007. So two years for and completion to say. I have to company, do a little bit of Googling myself. Also, Chikara founded in 2002, didn't crown their first singles uh, champion, which is their grand championship, until like 2011. Yeah, in fact, they established their cha tag team championships or the Campeones de Pereas before the grand championship. Yeah, that for the longest time, those are the only belts. They're Campeones de Campeonatos de Parejas. That was the yeah. only belts for so many years. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's I, actually I, interesting to know. Yeah. Anyways, I think we've talked this topic into the ground at this point. Yeah, uh, Maddie. Yes. Is it time for winners and losers? Well, let's do that. I'm just gonna say this. Watch if you if you could watch Double or Nothing. Watch Double or Nothing. I can't because I am booked. But you know. That, that that is a thing that being said gentlemen it's time for winners and losers as per usual in spade ace you're our guest you can get you can kick off with some losers please some losers you say yes hmm you have to give me a minute on this one all right, <laughs> i was I'll, not prepared I'll, all right i'll tell um, you I'll, I'll I'll take, i should have prepped you more on that T.W., you, you I, can kill some time while we do, while he thinks of some Yeah, that you know, up. I'll show you. First off, I'm going to have to borrow a segment from our good buddy Shintaira Curl. Ooh, D-Cell. Oh, boy. The D-Cell Battery Award to Vince McMahon for being an absolute grade one numpte. <laughs> oh, that deserves a button here. Let me, uh, let me, uh, let me fish that button for you. And voila. You fucking numpty! There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Seriously, Brock Lesnar, are you serious? Again? <laughs> Let it go, you friggin' loony. <laughs> Anyways, th that's my loser for the week. And that, I... And I, I, I was, oh, I got one more. And anyone who is actively hoping for AEW's despair and failure. Because <sighs> if AEW succeeds, that's good for the wrestling business. That's good for everyone. That's good for the fans because it creates an alternative and possibly makes WWE finally get off their ass, a.k.a. Vince McMahon. And yeah. it gives more wrestlers a place to work and make a living. And I will concur with that statement. I have, lose, I have a loser, Vince McMahon, myself. Why? Well, the Asha Masaro thing does not help, but fucking Brock Lesnar? Like, I get it. You want to establish the Saudi Arabia show, but all you have to do is tell, tell Seth, hey, fuck you, you're getting Brock again. Same amount of heat. Less bullshit and wasteful booking. 
dumbass. And uh, right. Riniko, yes, NG- New Japan is a great alternative, but oh, definitely, definitely. I feel like I feel like all elite wrestling is going to do better for a casual audience because number one, it's going to be on TNT, which is more widely accessible than New Japan World. And, and it's, it's, also it's, going it's, to, it's not a knock on New Japan or New Japan World. No, no, not at all. Think of it like also this the, way. You, Riniko, are willing to stay up all night to watch New Japan live. Which usually airs around 2 or 3 in the morning, depending on when they start. Ask a casual fan to do that. No. Not going to happen. T, 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 T up and I can't be bothered to do And we are fans of New oh, Japan oh, Pro oh, Wrestling. I'm, oh, yeah. We didn't talk about Best of Super Juniors. Um, that's because, unfortunately, due to the current uh, schedule I have in my life, um, I couldn't watch any of the Super Juniors this week. I'm sorry. Me neither. I'm, sorry. I'm playing catch up as well. So don't, don't, uh, don't uh, you know. But it, I will say this. Uh, the Kirk and Hall shows are good. As they generally are. I love that building so much. Also, a couple hey, of months will, will make be, uh, you go, Jesus. Also, we will be talking about the finals after that. Oh, rest week. assured. We will talk about the finals. We'll talk about the minion. We have not forgotten about New Japan Pro Wrestling. Do not worry. It's just that, you know, some weeks, other things take precedence due to their importance, like Oily Wrestling. This is big deal thing. Anyways, uh, Spade, do you have any losers? All right, Ace. Okay. So, to start off with the easy one, I kind of have to join in the threesome ha-ha phrasing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Vince. For a com- another completely different reason, too. Congratulations burying half your champions. You know, tag team visions being dead in the water, including mm-hmm. the female tag team champions. Where the fuck were they? That's not uh, a bad that's not a bad point. Where the fuck were they on spawn? Like I may not even be a huge fan of the iconics, but my god, give them a fucking like throw them a goddamn bone. Or in this case, a win. For God's sakes. Yeah, when's the last time the iconics won a match? Uh, their championship. Uh, that's depressing. And this is exactly why Sasha Banks had problems with WWE train the tag division like this because she knew this would happen. She knew this. Like even more so, taking the in a weird way taking the wind out of Kofi's sails. Because let's be honest here, after Rollins Styles, did anyone really have the energy for Kofi, or the appropriate amount of energy to put into Kofi? not really and then and then most of his most of his matches the past few nights have been eh like he had a, he had a decent tag with Rollins and then there was the match I believe and unless I'm horribly wrong that he had with Sammy who I just feel bad for him right now he comes back gets this huge pop he's being that you know anti public kind of guy and Oh, his booking is just bad. It is just bad. Like, of all the people that take out of the money in the bank, him? Sammy? Yeah. And the worst part was, Sammy was a replacement for Braun. So he had... Oh, just so that's a two sides. birds, one stone of bullshit right there. Yeah. it's You're, you're killing two injured birds with one stone. <laughs> oh, God. And both of them are adorable, adorable doves. That were released from a wedding. Aww. Yeah, it's that bad. <laughs> right, off, just, off oh. of that, off of that sad, sad stuff. Let's do some winners. Ace, do we? Do you want me to help kill uh, some yes, time please. there? You're good. Please kill the time. All right. Well, teed up. You kick us off. The cruiserweights for finally making it onto the main pay-per-view card. Please mm-hmm. make that a consistent thing. And of course, all elite wrestling. And of course, the return of Big E on SmackDown. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, testify, e. brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I got, I got, you got I got a good one here. Oh, yeah. Go right ahead, bud. Definite winner, Bailey. My God. Give her the push she needs. Give let this be her finally her run where things go her way. Cause right now, the public's behind her. WWE Universe is behind her. Keep this momentum fucking going. And 
Oh man, like I'm I'm so in her wheelhouse right now because they won't fucking put Oscar and Kyrie Sane on fucking television right now. I need somebody to fucking root for besides Becky. Just give me this. Give me this. Dita and Tita, you already did yours. Yeah, uh, mine. Got to keep it simple to one. All elite wrestling because no matter what happens. Their show will be better than anything WWE has put up this week. And that includes NXT. That's an oof right there. Tell me I'm wrong, folks. Tell me I'm fucking wrong. I don't want to know what you're fucking Don't you kink shame him. <laughs> I'm his co-host. That's my job. <laughs> Moving right along. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. But before we do anything else, we got to plug some stuff. Uh, Ace. Um, oh, God. <laughs> we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it to the Toku Riffs live program that you and I happen to be a part of. Sundays, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for that show. Uh, we're it's, going through some common writer stuff. writer time special gimmicks uh, right now. Please pray for us. Please let this next one actually be decent. Yeah, how's the first? Uh, how's the current? How's the current common writer series been? Is it is it watchable? Uh, it's getting better. It's getting better, but the word clusterfuck comes to mind. <laughs> Let, let's put it this way. It's one of those first half is a slog kind of series. Is it one of those rider series where they just try to shove in as many riders as possible? Into every yeah. Episode? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And the Sentai is, um, How do we explain uh, the Sentai? Good it, lord. Uh, you mean Pato Ranger versus Lupin Ranger? No, that's done. That was awesome. It, it ended awesome anyway. No, uh, we're we're in a new we're uh, Ryu Soldier. Ryu Sentai Ryu Soldier, or as I like to call it, uh, this child needs its pills quickly. Oh, is it, <laughs> is it Bipolar. Good lord. Oh. Um, mood shifter. So it. Is it one of those first episode? First episode, death count. Episode two, fart jokes. The the best way I could say it is to the old Brental Floss Phoenix Wright song, "Zany Wacky Murder." Happy happy wonderful death. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like I oh, said, um... episode one, death count. Episode two, fart jokes. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. Jokes. Seriously, fart jokes, Japan? Really? Well, <laughs> fart jokes, technically. I mean, one of the gimmicks has a... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that. Fart jokes. That's got me the next pay-per-view. Oh, God. WWE fart jokes. Better than stomping grounds, God damn it! <laughs> I wish I was fucking kidding, but I'm willing to bet Vince was thinking WWE fart jokes. Put it on a shirt. Anyway, watch us riff that shit <laughs> at 7 o'clock. It'll be myself, Ace, Easy, and a good, our good buddies, Easy Rider and the Sheets. Uh, T-Dub, you working on a new video, are you? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I'm currently working on a new video indeed. It should be out uh, hopefully by Sunday night. Ooh, yep. ooh can I plug one more thing? Sure. Actually, do this now. Uh, if you want to see more of me, I have a Twitch and a YouTube. Both uh, twitch.tv forward slash Neospade Ace. I am trying to get on there more as more and more as I can. I stream a variety of stuff. It's a good time, I promise. As well as I've currently got backups of my streams, as well as some new content coming down the line on YouTube forward slash Spade Ace, because you know what? Someone else took the other name anyway. Yeah, yeah come on. Or have a good time. I could I could use the audience, and you know what? Maybe I'll learn something in the future. Who knows? There you go. So twitch.tv slash Neo Spade Ace. Uh, of course, you want to support us. TWK's Patreon, patreon.com slash TWK Reviews. Of course, my tip jar, 
PayPal.me. Yeah, let me try that again. PayPal.me slash j 316 You can follow us on Twitter at j 316 at TWK Official, and at Spade Ace Tweets. Of course, I am on Instagram at j 316 and all that good stuff. And as always, uh, that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, it is about that time I had that button to say thank you very much for tuning in. Enjoy the week. Enjoy Double or Nothing. If you're watching it live, enjoy it. And if you're watching it, I know it's a painful pill to swallow. 50 bucks, 60 bucks, not easy. But it is technically independent wrestling because it's not WWE. <laughs> and you know what? Because I almost forgot this too. Monday is Memorial Day. Have a good holiday weekend. Enjoy it with people yeah, you love. We, ha- we had our Do Victoria Day weekend last weekend. I had a good long weekend. I hope it happens to you folks as well in the States. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Please do. On behalf of Spade Ace. That is me. You want you want to do your 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 D bun? Oh, thing absolutely! <laughs> I, I'm Spade Ace asking you what color your D button is today on that little remote you have. And you know what? If your D button is covered in what could only be attributed to whatever alcoholic drink you had that last pay per view. You probably should have drank a little more, cause oh boy, oh boy, brain bleach. <laughs> the good I stuff. I drank this bleach all the way down to the blue, and now I feel like Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Kenny Rogers. Hey, look, look, look! I'm magical. Welcome to Jackass. <laughs> I'm Kenny Rogers. Welcome to Jackass. <laughs> on behalf of DWK. <laughs> and I'm Kenny Rogers. <laughs> and this is my reality show, bitches. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you are I, I'm so glad that other people remember. Uh, Will Sasso is Kenny Rogers. Oh, God. Best How could I ever time. forget? Oh, that was awesome. Hey, are the guy from Link 182? <laughs> 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 I was raised on the dairy, bitch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dre- oh, my God. It's right. Do your catchphrase, Tina. <laughs> Until next time, this is TWK of TWK Reviews. Don't need to work your gimmick, and if you have the time, please watch my Machinima video that we, that I worked on. It's, oh, yeah, so Machinima video. video with him and Shin Tire Girl. It is awesome. Oh, thanks. I didn't think it was that good, but yeah, thank you. Uh, my name's Matt J. Reminding you that professional wrestling support your independent promotion as soon as possible. And I'm Kenny Rogers. Good night! Bye, everybody! Bye! Oh my god, are you former WCW what? world champion? Yes, Vince Russo, the genius, booked that crazy angle and yes, you were the champion, right? Genius. That's it, you remember, oh right? God. Holy yes, that's crap! You the WCW champion. That's, that's awesome. That's a legendary wow. angle. Of course, he's the business. I'm sorry about that. Of, it was, it well, that was great. It doesn't yeah. change anything, though. We, we, we can't give you a card. But... Yeah. Thanks, fellas. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm a big fan. We could invite him. Oh, to invite the, him to the party. The party, the party. The party. Yeah, yeah. 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 Love to yeah. go to the party. It's, it's, yeah. it's something we we throw. Yeah, yeah we throw them often. We throw them well, too often. It's some people say. Las Vegas, yeah, yeah. Start it, so you, to go you can party. say it's an after party. Yeah, it's it's a super kick party. Yeah.